we are so blessed to be here we are so blessed to just learn about the word of god we are so blessed to come in the presence of god uh we, today we are going to be looking at topic 84 we are going to be talking about topic 84 and we are going to be looking at the seven things that bring increase and about your assignment the seven things that bring increase and even about your assignment as we have others coming online let's begin with a prayer lord we bless you for this day we bless you for this evening almighty god we thank you holy spirit that your presence is here we thank you holy spirit that as we come to learn and to learn so much from your word mighty father we continue to trust you to come mighty father teach us and let us get wisdom let us get knowledge let us get understanding through your word holy spirit i invite you to come and speak through me come and speak to us come and teach us and today let us come out of today's class with so much information and with so much revelation in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen good evening everyone online and this is pastor connie what a beautiful evening and we are going to continue with prosperity last week we are looking at this topic of prosperity and today we are going to be continuing with this topic of prosperity we are going to be emphasizing on the seven things that bring increase the seven things that bring increase and your assignment if you have which i believe you have been watching and learning uh, dr arthur was here uh, pastor les was here and last week we are still talking about the same topic i am going to be literally kind of summarizing what we have been learning about from last week and i'm going to be talking about these topics i believe that most of the things i'm going to be talking about you actually already know because we have been doing them since last week we are highly looking at how to establish yourself for an increase how do you line yourself up for an increase the first thing and the first topic or the first point about lining yourself for an increase is to walk in truth you must be able to walk in truth you prosper when you walk in all the words god speaks and you obey it is so important for us to understand that you don't just read the word of God. You don't just speak the word of God. You must be able to obey the word of God. We find so many times that we speak the word, we read the word, but do we really obey the word of God? Because those who obey the word of God are the children of God. And Jesus was saying, you was when we love him. We obey him. It means we do love him. It is so important for us to walk in the truth. And the truth is only the word of God. It is not my words it's not anyone's words the truth is the word of god let us walk and obey the word of god are you obeying what the word of god is saying are you just speaking it or you are actually doing it it is so important that for you to be able to line yourself up for increase for prosperity you must be able to obey the word of god now when we talk about prosperity and increase we are not just talking about financial um financial increase we are talking about every areas of your life we are talking about your family increase we are talking about your spiritual increase we are talking about increase in wisdom increase in knowledge increase all around you in your home how do we see increase in our homes how do we see increase as a mom as a parent how do i see increase in my children's life and that is what we are talking about we are not going to just be talking about financial increase we are going to be talking about all areas of increase as a child of god it is god's desire that we increase it is god's desire that we have more and i'm talking about it's God's desire that we have more than enough that through us god can still show that he is a god of increase and we can see that from the beginning of the word of god which is genesis when god commanded man to multiply it is god's desire that we multiply the second point that is also very important when it comes to bringing increase is faithfulness faithfulness is so important continue to meditate on god's word until it overtakes you it is so important to understand that the moment you have the word of god the moment you believe the word of god the moment you obey the word of god you have to be delegated you have to continue in faithfulness sometimes you you might uh, speak the word of god today and definitely it might not it might not actually reflect i have seen so many times that i had to speak the word of god even for more than a year yes for more than a year even longer 
You can speak the word of God even for longer, but faithfulness is not giving up. Faithfulness is you staying in, saying, no, I am going to believe the word of God. I am not going to let go of this word. I am not going to let go of my faith. I am going to stand strong and I'm going to continue believing God. It doesn't matter what my physical circumstances are right now. Yes, which I know sometimes it can be scary, but it is so important for you to hold on to the word of God. Don't lose it. Continue speaking it. Continue holding on to it. Continue walking in that word. And I assure you, it will surely come to pass. You must keep to, you must keep being faithful when it comes to the things of God. And when I talk about faithfulness, also I want to bring this part of whatever you are doing in the house of God, whatever you are doing in the, in the ministry, whatever you are doing with your gift and whatever you are doing, also serving God. Keep faithful. Sometimes you might not see the results immediately. Sometimes you might not see the rewards immediately. But I want to say to you, keep doing it. Don't give up. Keep serving God. Even in the hardest times, even in the most difficult times, even when you are mocked, just keep being faithful. Keep serving God. Keep on serving the Lord. Keep on, I mean, reflecting the word of God. Keep on desiring for God to bring fruit. And I assure you, we shall see the fruit. Uh, the third point is diligence. And here we see God rewards those who delicately, delicately seek him. God rewards those who continue honestly seek him. Let us keep seeking the Lord. We must be able for us to see increase. We must put time to seek the Lord. We must put time aside to fully seek the Lord, to fully listen from the Lord. When last did you give time to listen to, to the voice of the Holy Spirit? No matter what situation is going on right now, have you given time to really sit before the Lord and seek him and read his word and listen to his voice and listen to his direction and listen to his guidance on a specific situation that that is happening right now in your house it is so important that we seek the lord i'm talking about we seek him not the things that he gives us we don't seek the things that he gives us the increase that we are supposed to get we seek the lord and we seek his kingdom first and the other things follows so it is so important for us to seek him Let's seek the Lord and let us be honest and genuine when we are seeking God. Let us not seek the things that follow. Because those things, the Bible also promises that if we seek first his kingdom, these things will actually follow. And it's so, so, so crucial that we actually seek the Lord truthfully. And it is, we can see this in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it reads, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that delicately seek him. We must know and come to the Lord and seek him first and know that he is going to reward us. There is a reward when you seek the Lord. There is an increase. You will surely see an increase. The moment you go to seek him, seek first his kingdom, you are surely going to see the reward. Let us not seek the things. The increase, but let us seek the Lord himself and let us put time aside and make appointment with the Lord and seek him and speak to him. Let's seek his wisdom. Let's seek his knowledge. Let's seek his guidance. Let's seek his revelation through his word. And I assure you, we are going to see increase on every side of our life. We are going to see physical increase. We are going to see increase in our families. We are going to see increase in our children's lives. We are going to see increase financially if we put time and actually seek seek the Lord. Another part, another point that is so important is are you tithing? If you want to see the increase in your life, are you tithing? Are you actually tithing your ten? And I believe that this is something that has been talked about and it is so important for us to understand that for us to tithe, we are actually honoring God and we are keeping him first. Tithing is not, and, and I know Pastor Les has spoken about tithing, and I just want to re-emphasize a bit about tithing. It is so important for you to do when you are tithing to understand that you are not doing it as a law, 
It's not kind of a law. You are doing it because you love the Lord. You are doing it in reverence for the Lord. And you, as we're saying here, it is so important that to know that I am doing this to honor my father. I'm doing this to honor my God. I'm doing it because I do love my father. I'm doing it this because everything I have is his. So it is so important to understand that if we want an increase in our life, we must task tithe faithfully. <laughs> Tithe faithfully. Go back to those principles and, and ask the Holy Spirit to give you grace, to give us grace to start tithing faithfully. We have to be able to tithe. That is when you are going to see an increase in your life. And I'm talking about a full increase in your life. Are you sowing? Are we sowing as children of God? Are we sowing? Are we sowing those seeds? We can see this is also, we must be able to be a giver. The more we give God the more we give, God can trust us even with more. We must be able to be givers. The more we give, the more God can trust us for more. If we want to see increase, we must be able to give. We must be able to sow. You know, when I was talking about tithing, tithing is something which is your tenth. You know, the tenth that you give the Lord, it's not questionable. It's not something you question. But when you are giving this tithe, you are giving it to the spiritual home that is building you. The Bible talks about this. You are giving the tithe to your spiritual home. The home that is building you, the home that is teaching you, the home that is edifying you. And I'm talking about a spiritual home. Now, when it comes to sowing, sowing is you can give your seed according to how you feel led, according to what you see the need is. You can sow seeds. Uh, you can sow a seed in areas that you feel this area is where I feel I want to sow a seed. So when you tithe, it doesn't mean that is the end. Tithe and also sow seeds. And I want to say this because I fully believe and I've seen it working in my life. The, this principle of, of always saying that all oh, the tithe, the 10 percent, oh goodness me, it is a lot. I mean, it's a 10 percent. We have to get to a level whereby we are actually encouraged in our spirits to actually even give our whole salary as a seed. It is possible. It is really possible whereby you can get your salary and say to the Lord, I want to give it as a seed for increase. Because if you are in your spirit decided to, to just allow the Lord and give this, this your salary as a seed and you sow it, it means inside your spirit you are saying, Lord, this salary is not mine. Lord, you have the increase. And I want to emphasize again, let us not limit the Lord. Let us not limit the Lord if we want to see an increase in our life. It is so important that if we want to see an increase, an overflowing increase, that increase that multiplies daily, we have to be people who release our hands. We have to be people who can sow seeds, who who can give in areas of need, who can give even to the gospel, who can give in areas where we see there is a need, there is gospel. Right now there's ministries that are calling upon people to give so that the gospel can be spread. If you can't go there because maybe right now you have a job, you can't get there, yes, you can sow a seed into that ministry. So let us be children of God who can sow seeds, children of God who can release our hands. If we want to see the increase, we must not hold back. We must be able to say to the Lord, Lord, I'm giving it to you because I know you are my increase. You are my provider. You will sustain me. It has to take a level of faith for us to be able to walk like that. And another thing that I was talking about is believing. Believing. Another principle about increase is our faith. It is believing. It is walking in faith, knowing that you know what? My life is not my own. I believe and I have faith that the Lord is going to provide. I have faith that the Lord is going to increase. We can see this and we are going to be reading uh, Romans. We are going to be reading Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. For in it... The righteous of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It is so important for us to understand that the just shall live by faith. Let us be 
in our spirit. Let us allow that staring in our spirit to understand that the just shall actually live by faith. If you are thinking right now and overthinking your life and saying, oh, I, I want more. Oh, Lord, how am I going to increase? How am I going to be able to pay these bills? It is so important for you to turn to the Lord because the Bible talks about it here. It has to come from a place of faith. Go before the Lord and say to the Lord, Lord, I know that you are able to provide exceedingly, abundantly, above all you know that is what the word of god says he's able to provide exceedingly abundantly above all that is the word of god and let me tell you something it is true the lord is ready wanting desiring to actually give you abundancy increase you but you have to be at a level of faith you have to believe his word and you have to walk by faith you have to walk saying lord i'm giving my tithe lord i'm sowing but i know almighty father that you are going to provide exceedingly abundantly and i'm not going to lack anything i'm not going to lack in my family i am not going to lack lord i have a need here but i believe that almighty father you are able to provide exceedingly abundantly and above all and it's so so important to have faith in the word of god let's walk in faith i know this i have done this i do this as a daily thing every day i tell the lord lord my life is in your hands i walk believing that as i walk today you are going to provide every need in my home you are going to provide every need that is around me and lord you are going to help me to be someone who can be so a seed to be a blessing to others so when god provides to me something i'm already asking lord how would you like me to use this that you have given me it is so important to understand that the finances the money that you get is not yours it is the lord's because i i so many times i find that the reason why we hold back because we think the money is ours that salary is mine that is mine this is mine but the moment you get to a level of understanding you know what it is not mine actually lord this is yours and my hand is outstretched and lord i'm ready to do your will and i'm ready to ask you lord to help me and show me where should i sow what should i do because if you are going to walk in increase you must be able to release your hand and you must be able to walk in full faith uh, we also can see uh, also in Hebrews, we can also look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 13. I'm still talking about believing. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If anyone draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And it is the Lord saying to us that we as his children must live by faith. We must be reminded that, you know, I'm a child of God. I will live by faith. But when we draw back and we say, no, I can't provide for myself. I will provide for myself. I will do it by myself. We will do it in this home. My husband and I will do this thing. The Bible talks about when we draw back. He says here that he doesn't have pleasure in us. And it is so important to live every day, believing the Lord, walking and believing that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. The seventh point, the seventh point that brings increase is saying, is speaking. Let us, let us, I know I spoke about this the last time on Monday the 8th. And I want to say again, it is so important to practice this habit of saying, speaking. Faith must be in two places. Faith must be in two places. It must be in your heart. It must be in your mouth. Romans chapter 10 verse 8 says, but what does it say? The word of God is near you in your mouth, in your heart. Hence, that is the word of faith which we preach. And we can also see in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and I'm talking about believe and say. You don't do one. You believe and you say. You believe in your heart and you speak with your lips and with your mouth. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, whosoever, it says here, says, 
You know, you have to speak for you to be able to say or to say to this mountain, you have to be in a position whereby you speak. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in their heart. That's where we see your faith. That is where we see the point I was talking about believing. But believes that those things he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. It is so, so, so important for us to believe in our hearts, but also to speak. Be able to speak these things. Speak it. I know so many times, it, 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 you know, I, I find it so many times that when, when, when you, you read the word of God and, and you start believing, for example, you, you pray a prayer and you say, Lord, I thank you that I know that my needs are met. You know, you have just prayed. So through the word of God, it goes into your heart. Lord, you are able to provide exceedingly abundantly. You know, you believe in your heart. But so many times I've found the enemy attacking me and in my mind, oh, something happens. It can be something, a message on the phone. It can be someone or a situation that comes immediately. It can be the next morning to just tell me that, you know what? What you believe is not going to work. And it's so, so important for us to be able to speak. You know, I speak to myself and I speak and I tell the enemy, you are joking. I believe the word of God. He's able to provide exceedingly abundantly and my God will do it. My God will not fail. I know who I believe. It's not me, but it is my God through Jesus Christ who will do it. Let us be able to speak the word when the enemy brings those arrows, when the enemy comes with those voices, when the enemy finds you alone, quiet, and he wants to come in it's through your mind and said to you, oh no, never, God will never do it. Do you think it will be better? When the enemy brings in those messages that comes through your phone, when the enemy, maybe it can be your kids saying to you, oh, this is impossible, or family members trying to come through the enemy, not them, but the enemy piercing through those things to make you give up. It is so important that you speak. Speak the word of God. It doesn't matter how long I'm telling you something. It is so rewarding. You feel free. You feel so such a peace when you speak the word of God. Even in that situation, God will come through. It is so important for us to keep those uh, points in, in, in check. It is so important for us to understand, to receive the increase. I'm just going to go back a bit. To receive an increase before the Lord, we have to walk in truth. We must be able to walk in the word of God. We must be able to read the word of God, meditate on the word of God, believe the word of God. We must also be able to be faithful. Let's be faithful. That is the second point. Let's keep faithful. We must also be delegate. We must stay consistent. Let's stay consistent. Don't give up. Don't throw back. Don't, don't give up. And we must also tithe. We must sow. You must be able to identify areas where you can sow seed and according to what you are led to do. But you can see so many ministries. There's ministries there's, that need a seed to take the gospel. You can see so many needs around you. Let us be able to sow so that we can be able to receive an increase. Also believe in God. Let us have faith. And lastly, speaking the word of God. We believe it. And we speak the word of God. Okay. So it is so, so important now. When I look at our assignment, and we are going to be looking at three things that we need to focus on. Three things that we need to focus on when it comes to this area of increase. Three things that we need to focus on. The first one is to give. When it comes to our assignments, these are the three things that we need to focus on. You know, when I talk about assignments, I'm talking about what you feel you are called to do, what you feel the Lord is drawing you to do. And these are the three things that I'm going to give as guideline. The first thing is give to the poor. Be open to give to the poor. Be open to give to the poor. The, these things that we are talking about, the three points that I'm talking about are all backed up and we are getting them from the word of God. And we can see in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. It is so important for us to understand that God has instructed us to give to the poor. Let us give to the poor. Let us look at people in need, and it doesn't even have to be far. It can be a relative. It can be a family member right now, right, right now. It can be a family member in need. 
right now you don't even have to go so far to know who is in need we are not it can be a family member it can be a friend right now where you hear you can hear you they might have sent you a message you must have you might have heard from another family member that 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 so and so has a need and you know what it is so important for us to have those ears and those eyes to see where to help the people around us it can be someone even that you don't know it can be someone on the street yes it can be someone on the street that you are giving intentionally, saying, I am giving because I love the Lord. I am giving to this person because I see that they need food. And it is so important for us to be able to give to the poor around us. Put some something aside and invest and give into the poor because the word of God here assures us that you are lending, not to man, but you are lending to God and God will pay you back. Not man, God himself is going to pay you back. And you know what I mean when God pays you back. When God pays you back, he can use man. And when God pays you back, it doesn't have to be specifically a financial payment. It can be in any form of payment that the Lord can pay you back. God can pay you back through healing. God can pay you back in any way that he feels you need. And the second point is we must also be able to give to the gospel. Another area that we need to be able to give is to give to the gospel. God is after souls. God is after souls. When God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come on this earth, it was all about souls. It was all about reconciliation. And we should be able to identify areas where we can give into the gospel. God instructs us to take care of those who teach, those who teach the word, those who who edify us to, uh, according to the word of God, those who take time, those who are in full-time ministry, who are taking time to seek the Lord, those who are taking time to have a revelation of the word of God so that they can come and edify and teach. It's so important that we also can give into these ministries. We can also give in these giftings. And we can see this in, general, in, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 6 to 7 let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches let him who actually let him who is taught the word share in all good things which with him who teaches let us be generous let us be people who can see we have so many ministries that god has put around us and we can give into those ministries that are daily spreading the word of God. Maybe right now you are at work, you can't, you know, you can't go into Africa, you can't go into, I don't know, Asia, you can't go into that area to, to preach the gospel. You actually can be a channel to give so that that evangelist can go out there and can be able to bring in the souls. If you are at work and you really can't, then God has brought and has given us apostles who are available, who are going to plant, who are going to begin a work. God has given us teachers. God has given us all these offices and all these ministries. Let us be people who can give and who can bless these ministries and these gifts and these ministers, the servants of God that God has put to seek the word of God, to come and edify us through the word of God. Let us not be stingy or hold back when we are giving the people who are edifying us and teaching us daily in the things of God. And the last, last point is to give to your personal assignment. The last point is also to give to your personal assignment. Pray and ask God, what is your personal assignment? All of us as children of God, we have a personal assignment. And it's so important for us to pray to the Lord, to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal, to show us our specific personal assignment. After you have given in those two areas, it is also important that you give to your personal assignment. It may be to finance a particular ministry or even it might not be that you are the one who is going to build a school or that you are not going to build a Bible school, but it might be to actually finance a specific particular ministry or to build a school or finance an orphanage, depending on what the Lord draws you to do. It is so important for us to seek the Lord, to take time out, seek the Lord. Lord, can you show me? Can you guide me? Can you lead me? 
uh, in regards to my personal assignment. It is so important for you to know what you are called to do, which areas are you called, which areas are you drawn by the Holy Spirit to be and give and stand. Sometimes you might even find yourself, and those are the areas that God actually is calling you to stand, maybe in prayer, Pray for this specific area. Give in this specific area. All of us as children of God, we have a personal assignment. And it is so important that we take time out and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us to our personal assignment. So you do not have to wait for a word from God or to get a feel led for the first two points. You know, the first two points that I was talking about giving to the poor and giving to the gospel giving to the gospel and giving to the poor you actually don't have to really wait on the lord to give you a word to seek the lord and go to show you that you must give to this poor gentleman who is seated somewhere who needs food but the word of god is so clear on these areas and God expects us to obey his word. It has been laid out in the word of God that we ought to give to the poor, that we ought also to, to finance the gospel for souls. That is very clear. You don't actually have to fully seek the Lord and sit and ask for the word because the word of God is very clear. It has been given to us as an instruction. But we should just decide in our hearts as whom to give and how much we need to give in these two areas of giving to the poor and giving into the ministry of the gospel. For the third point, which is your assignment, it is very, very important that we spend time on it and we ask God as to what my or your specific assignment truly is. It might be only one thing that you might get involved in for your entire life, but it might bear fruit for years to come. It might be more than one thing. It might be one thing that the Lord directs you to specifically focus on as your assignment. But that specific assignment is going to bear so much fruit. In that specific assignment that you give your, your life to, that, that you give into, you are going actually to bear the fruits and you are going to see the increase. For others, it might be more than one according to the grace that God has given you. It is so important to be able to give in that specific assignment, to see the increase. And remember, it is going to bear fruit. Fruit is going to be seen. Fruit that we can carry on for generations and for years to come. So ultimately, the ultimate goal that we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Understand, God is all about abundance. But when God is giving you in abundance, it is all about for a good work. God is giving you abundance to be able to do the good work. God is not giving you abundance to show off. God is not giving you abundance to hold back for you and I and myself. God is giving you abundance for good work, to be able to carry out the good work that the Lord expects from us. We ought to be vessels. We ought to be people that God can use, that can entrust with so much because God knows we are going to be a blessing. We are not going to hold back. When God increases, you remember, God wants you to be a blessing it's not about you alone it's about you being a blessing it's about you being a channel of blessing to so many around you to so many out there that are going to be highly touched so i would like to say to all of us today as we are watching this as we are studying because i believe that right now as you sitting there and studying this message it's about us being a blessing and having abundance to be a blessing to others. It's not about us holding back. It's not about us uh, feeling proud that look at how I've accumulated all this. Look at my cars. Look at my houses. Look at how God has blessed me. It is all about I and you being a blessing. We ought to be a channel of blessing. When God blesses us, we must be a channel of blessing to others that God 
wants to show grace and mercy and love to. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the time that you have given us. We thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, I want to come before you today and I pray, mighty Father, that as you are entrusting us with so much, as you are entrusting us with an increase, mighty Father, it is my prayer, mighty King of glory, that we will be true stewards. We shall be stewards, mighty Father, that can be entrusted, that can be able to be blessed to bless others, mighty Lord, that mighty Father can be able to be a blessing to so many around us who are in need, so many around us, mighty Father, who are in tears, that we can be a blessing to your ministry, to your word. We can be a blessing to the gifts and to the calling around us, mighty Father. I pray for anyone who is watching today and who is studying today, mighty Lord, who is not sure about their specific assignment. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will go and bring clarity about their specific assignment. May you remind us, mighty Lord, why we are talking about the increase why you increase us mighty father you increase us lord so that we can be a blessing to so many so that we can be a blessing to many around us thank you lord in the name of our lord jesus christ hallelujah amen thank you so much for being here thank you for learning uh, i hope this has taught you it has edified you god bless you and have a beautiful evening